Hello, hello, and welcome back to Cars of Glasgow. I'm Thomas, and today you join me in the lovely and scenic Agile and Butte. And with the Toyota Yaris Cross, kindly supplied by the Toyota of Helensburg. Uh, so make sure you check those guys out. Special thanks to them lending me the car. Today I'm going to show you what the car is like inside and out, and give you a quick test drive. So here we have the Toyota Yaris Cross. You may be wondering what it is. This kind of car came out of nowhere a couple of years ago, and basically it's a Toyota Yaris hybrid raised up a little bit larger and they call it the cross. I actually think it looks really good and I'm not just saying that because these indicators are reminding me of the latest LC500. I think it's quite a handsome car and it's distinctively Toyota. Uh, you can just kind of tell by the way it looks, it's quite chunky, the aesthetic of it. I just think it looks really good and rugged. And perhaps that's what you're looking for in your kind of mini crossover. This car only comes with a 1.5 litre three-cylinder petrol, which we'll touch on in a minute. Um, but the hybrid only in the UK, hence the little blue inside the Toyota badge. This particular car is a design trim. At the moment there is four variations of the Icon, Excel, as well as the GR Sport. And each of those models have a kind of distinct fascia, as well as the rear end can get treatments on different alloy wheels. I believe the standard car comes with 16 inch wheels and this particular one comes with 17 as you can see here. The headlight design, it's alright, you know, it's not as inoffensive. I said the favourite bit is these vertical um, indicators, I don't know why I like so much. The headlight, little strip there and you can kind of see quite pretty and modern in there, what you expect from a modern vehicle. Not too much to see up front, it has that Toyota bit which I've noticed. In most of the products, as well as Lexus, that rubber strip makes the car a little bit quieter and maybe a little bit more dynamic. Round the side here, you're going to see this little vortex generator. I believe that makes the car a little bit quieter, something that does not wind flow through here. You see that quite commonly in Toyota and Lexus products. The wheel arches in this car, if they're not the same, they're very similar to the ones you get in the RAV4 even, because they're quite boxy, quite chunky. And I think it just helps with the appeal of a vehicle a little bit more <laughs> off-roaded than potentially it is. This car is front wheel drive standard, but you can get a full drive option, which makes it a lot bit more compelling when the weather looks like this today. Yeah, that's what we're dealing with. Let's have a look in the boot. I said the top spec ones have electric boots, this spec manual. Just under 400 litres of boot space. You do lose a little bit more boot space if you opt for the four wheel drive one, just to the design of the rear, but it's not dramatic. As you can see, loads of room, squared off, and you know, this kind of plastic material is ideal if you've got like a husky or some sort of long haired dog because the material isn't going to allow the hair to get stuck into it. So that is something that I think would be useful for dog owners. Nice squared off shape, you know, your pooch can be happy in there. The rear of the car, I do like the modern aesthetic of it. I know the new CHR's just out as well, um, and that kind of carries over this kind of design language here. But yeah, what do you think of it? I, I really like Toyotas right now. Uh, you know, if you asked me 15 years ago, I thought they were a little bit curvy, a little bit bland. I think they've done the most to make it exciting to look at and just like different. Do you know, and that's what's happening here. With this grey paint, do you know, you can see you've got a grey bit of the bumper here. This changes in the higher spec models. And they've not tried to do anything to say, oh, here's a fake exhaust. You've got a little exhaust tip down there. Do you know, it's a hybrid that knows what it is, it's in its lane, which is fine. We'll have a quick look at the back. One last thing in the rear is this kind of reminds me of, do you know, the BZ4X, the RZ, just that aerodynamic kind of design for the rear spoiler, stroke, do you know, roof profile, I don't know what I want to call it, but yeah, that's what that reminded me of. Let's start in the back. What have we got? We have got room for three abreast. There is a child seat anchor point at the back, so if you want to get a child seat in, it's not too bad. As you can see, the door's open a reasonable amount. Do you know, you can get yourself in there, you can get kids in there, whatever you want. Door copy, there is a little room for a little bottle, but that's about it. Nothing too exciting going on here. And the materials back here are plastic and trim anyway, but at least that means it's easy to wipe down. So what's it like in the back? Well, I'm five foot eleven, maybe six foot of the big boots today, but Headroom's all right for myself, do no shoulder room. I would say two adults back here, no problem. Probably three kids uh, or taking their mates to the pub or an airport run at a push. But yeah, I think comfortable two adults, three children, 
you'll be fine. One big happy pooch back here. <laughs> um, also probably all right. You know, window room is fine. I think the B pillar can be a little bit thick. So I'm sitting back, looking out. That's my only takeaway, even from driving it. But you know, it is what it is. I like the back of the car. You know, you've got a reasonable knee room. You know, foot room's all right. There's a small transmission hump there, so somebody's going to have to put their feet up. But you know, I think for two people, child seats, whatever it may be, it's perfectly adequate. There isn't any little like kind of map pockets behind here, which is a little bit disappointing. But I know I've seen that in other Toyota Lexus products. It just it makes me. I just don't know why. But I do believe because I've got the zips here, they can get washed. I have heard that before in other Toyota products. So I'm going to go out on a limb and say that's what this is for as well. You can unzip that and probably rewash these. Uh, you know, there's not too much to say back here. There's no air vents or charging or anything like that back here. It's just a nice, family friendly vehicle. And you've got a good view out the front, which is probably important for making sure you don't get car sickness. So for those that are wondering, yes, the seats fold down and they do conveniently have that hard to do with one hand 40-20-40 split, there's a little tab here to pull, there we go and then you've got cup holders if you want and that one can fold down as well so this is quite configurable as well for those trips skiing or going to a certain speedy shop you've got flexibility for family life back there so let's go ahead and jump inside the car because it's a bit windy and a bit horrible outside today and this is where the magic happens as we can see so this is standard toyota fare which means you're going to get a nice blend of ergonomics build quality and easy to read gauge cluster and dials everything's logically where you'd expect it lights are on the stock you've got window switches and um, door locks on the right hand side wipers up here all cars come with the toyota safety system and they come with radar cruise control which is fantastic Let it do this little movie at the beginning, starting up. And because it's got that EV part of it, it's quiet, which is really cool. Up here, you can see we've got a touchscreen. This is standard Toyota Fare. They've changed the, the graphics, but if you've seen a previous video, you're going to know what's kind of going on here. Uh, but you can see a touch of a button, what can happen. The sound system in this car is pretty good. I don't want copyright on this video, but yeah, it doesn't have the JBL sound system, that is an option, um, but it sounds decent. As you can see here, we've got a little bit of storage there where you can put something like your iPhone. Down here, you've got room for, you know, sweeties, other bits, you've even got a charge outlet, which you can put the 12 volt power outlet over the lid. So, but you can charge your iPhone or something in there, and you've got your USB point to charge your other devices. So the touchscreen up here, you've got a couple of options, and you can do the hard coded buttons or you can touch the touchscreen like so. It's nice, fast, responsive. I like the fact it's at eye level as well, so when you're driving, you can just touch it. Hazards, nice solid button. Air vents, you may notice you've got these elliptical kind of ones in the exterior, or the sides, sorry, of the car. And then the inside here, we've got little central ones that are a little bit smaller, and a little bit more squared off. So the little shelf, handy. I like the fact you've got a nice blend of physical buttons for the like, fan speed, you, know, you can do your air conditioning, you can change the direction of the airflow, wearing gloves, you don't have to worry about anything, temperature, it's all easy to do. And then down here is where your uh, heated seats would be. The car uses a CVT transmission, standard Toyota Lexus Fair, P, R, N, D, and B is for like the special regen kind of mode when you're the extra braking and that when you're out in the motorway and just driving around I typically just leave it in drive we also have drive modes if you wanted to put it into various modes probably eco mode being the kind of car that this is traction control off if you wish the auto hold button until the seats unbuckled thank you for that let me know and then we've got an EV button down here which just if the car allows it and you've got enough battery charge it'll allow you to total around the low speeds in the electric only mode we do have two cup holders down here armrest and we've got a little tray again probably enough room for your phone which is quite cool it wouldn't be a cars of glasgow video without a glove box reveal 
as you can see, softly damped um, and not lined with any fuzzy stuff, just plastic, but it is fairly deep, so you're gonna get enough, you know, everyday items in there for road trips, which is handy. Speaking of road trips, the door bins themselves, reasonable size, quite deep. I'd like them to be a little bit wider, but they are deep enough for a big bottle or something like that. And again, this is a Toyota Lexus thing, a little bit of room there, which I know it's a door handle, but I end up putting stuff in here on road trips. It's just handy for, you know, like coins, sweeties, whatever you may want it to be. This door card material here just reminds me of the Range Rover Sport. I don't know why, I think it's just because that material's kind of going around and covering the speaker grill. That just kind of reminds me of that. But inside the car, I don't know, the quality's good, you know, it's... It's at a price point, you know, so it's not going to be as luxurious as like an S-Class or the LC500, but, you know, it's, it's soft squidgy, like look how soft and squidgy the dashboard is, you know, that's kind of wrapped in some sort of material, touch points are reasonable, and the seats themselves, I've got this kind of, you know, the fabric and material, but this looks, if you squint a bit like tweeds, a little bit, but um, it's nicely bolstered, it's nice, you know, soft squidgy material. I just that they're comfortable, then you can sit in it and get comfortable. And the door handles are just door handles, do you know? You're not going to have to like, worry about learning anything different, like pushing buttons or pulling levers. It's just a traditional mechanical door handle. So, you join me behind the wheel of the Toyota Yaris Cross. First off the bat, comfortable. I don't know, it's a crossover, it's a Toyota crossover, it's a hybrid, it's not a Porsche Macan, like you see past there. So, what is it? It's a comfortable small crossover, competes with the Ford Puma, you know, the Volkswagen T-Cross, maybe the T-Rock in some aspects. It's got a lot going for it, it's a very hot competitive market, and it's a hot competitive segment as well, of that niche market as well. There is this new CHR coming out with the kind of flush door handles and the kind of sexier body. This car offers a little bit more practicality. You can end up even for the road safety systems. It has a whole host of safety systems which are great. But what you want to know is what it's like to drive. So great visibility out the front. We've got cameras in the rear, sensors, big mirrors. It's going to be a to park. It's automatic, so you don't have to worry about rolling your own gears. Put it to drive and go. The kind of car it is, we're just going to enjoy the scenery and just enjoy driving today. It's ideal for going to the shops, it's spacious enough. The back seats are large enough for kids to do I see anchor points for child seats and right or two seats. It's got the flexibility for when seats down. So, what's the Toyota Yaris Cross like to drive? You're going to ask. Well, you're not going to win any awards for breakneck speeds and you're probably not going to get any points in your license for speeding because 0 to 60 is in just over 11 seconds but what you are going to enjoy is the low fuel consumption or high yeah low fuel consumption high mpgs it's very efficient around town you can hear it now doing over doing 27 miles per hour it's quite quiet here and i like that it's, it's a great visibility because you're a little bit higher off the ground, you can place things. And the boot's larger than the standard Yaris, so again, you can get a larger dog. Thinking if you've got a Husky, it's potentially going to be a good one because you know, the long hair is not going to get caught in the woven fabric of a material seat, and you've got a nice, reasonable size boot. I think this kind of car suits the kind of needs. Again, if you've got all the kids and all the paraphernalia that comes with that, chuck that in the back. But you can hear me. I feel like I'm Roger out of American Dad speaking in a quieter voice. But that's how relaxed it is around town. Comfortable suspension, I said the road's been a little bit wet and undulating today when a gale and butte, gale look heads just passes there. And you know, it's great, it's a great car. It's a great all-round family car. And I don't really know what else to say about it because it's just doing the all-round thing great. That is the lane assist beeping at me. Um, but yeah, it's like putting the foot down. Yes, it may be a little bit noisy because the three cylinder of CVT under harsh acceleration. I know other reviewers and people are thinking that if you've, if you've been reviewing this car or looking at it, but honestly, I wouldn't let that put you off. You know, the prospect of a 10 year warranty, the prospect of good MPG, not have to worry about it. 
just various trim levels and styles and practicality. All, all for somebody that's looking for it. And the four wheel drive thing is going to be great for people. I think that's just a, a game changer in this segment. So that is all I've really got to say about this year. It's just, it just does everything good. Um, and there's nothing really that bad about it, which is well, anything that I can see anyway. There's nothing that bad that I can come in and say, oh, go buy it because of X and Y. Like, I feel pretty confident saying it's going to be semi, more than semi reliable, but you know, nothing's 100% bulletproof, but they've got a very good track record. So here's a good test uphill, acceleration, even around about. There we go. So you get that momentarily CVT and engine noise, but out with that, it's great. You know, I really enjoy it. It's a really comfortable car, and it's just going to make life easy. You know, uh, suspension's compliant, seats are comfortable, visibility is good at the front. So I just want to say thank you so much for watching this video on the Toyota Yaris Cross. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel below. A special thanks again to Helms for Toyota for loaning me their vehicle. As always, stay safe and I'll see you next video. Ciao.